This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. As a rule, we talk about, or at least we have been talking about, the choices for the end of life. But today, we are going to talk about the here and now. We're not going to talk about the end. We're going to talk about now. And to talk with us, we, are, we have my dear friend, and everybody knows we only talk to dear friends, <laughs> Frank Haas. Welcome, 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 Frank. Aloha, Marcia. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. We've uh, done a lot of stuff, stuff together, together, but not lately, yes. so this is good to be here. So what we're going to do to talk about today is one of those things that I've known Frank to be involved for as long as I've known him. But we're going to call this Recreating the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Mm -hmm. How's that for a title? Okay. Frank has been part of everything. Let me see if I, let me read this right. Da 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 da. Frank has been, he is principal marketing manager engaged in business planning, accountability programs, new business development, research coordinator, environmental scans, presentation support, hospitality and cup, community, customer service training, international projects. Wow. <laughs> I can't keep a job. I, I, I need focus. <laughs> but uh, those are all things that I, I'm passionate about, and uh, I love doing them. So uh, I just, I just keep just keep, keep doing it. Right. Yes, keep right. doing it. Well, and we, the community, have benefited from all of these things. But now you are taking on this tourism, the Hawaii Tourism Authority, mm -hmm. and the paper the news and the bill before the legislature does not sound promising. Mm -hmm. So it takes people like you to recreate the Hawaii Tourism Authority, at least, I hope. Well, it's, it's actually rethinking tourism in general because uh, everybody's affected by tourism. Yes. Uh, there have been some scary headlines and, and sort of dramatic headlines. Uh, last Friday, uh, mm -hmm. I know this show goes over and over, but recently there was a headline that says uh, they keep coming. You know, we might get 10 million tourists this year. Um, and, and the implied question there is, what are we doing about it? Uh, is that a problem? Uh, certainly from the standpoint of the industry the, and the state uh, economic uh, bottom line, it's, it's, uh, it seems like a good thing. But when you drill into it, there are a lot of problems that come with that. And with those problems comes the need to manage tourism. And that's, that's really my thing. It's not is tourism good or bad, it's how you handle it, how you manage it. Yes. And we need to manage it. One of the things that concerns me about uh, just the talk about let's, let's, let's stop promoting tourism, let's stop marketing tourism, is that that means we stop c controlling tourism. And um, it's not just marketing. Um, and I'll, I'll let you throw a question here, <laughs> but I can talk about the whole development of uh, some of the strategic plans and why they haven't really been successful in that idea about managing tourism. Well, well, first, tell us what is the Hawaii Tourism Authority? What What is that exactly? Well, it was created in 1998, and if you go back to 1998, we had a couple of scares. Right. For, the first, uh, for the first time in a long time, we had uh, a couple of years where there was either negative growth in tourism or flat growth, and people said, oh my goodness, uh, we need to change something. And what needed to change uh, back then was there was no long-term plan. There was no dedicated funding. Uh, the marketing organization for HVC it was HVCB, which was not a state agency. So they were they were really interested in in the uh, industry itself, not the broader mm -hmm. idea of the state. And so um, the tourism authority was created to uh, have a long-term view. And to have a statewide view, not just marketing, but all the other things that uh, affect uh, both the tourist and the resident when it comes to this important industry. The other thing that was necessary back then was to, um, if you want to have a long-range plan, you needed dedicated funding. And prior to that, um, 
the HVCB went to the legislature every year and with their tin cup and they yes. said, please give us some money. And some years they would get money, some years they would get less money. And you can't, you can't really plan that way. So those two things happened. There was an agency that was created as a state agency with a broad uh, mandate to look at all of tourism. And then coupled with that was uh, dedicated uh, funding. The mission of the Tourism Authority, and I wanted to find the right words, but uh, it's to strategically manage Hawaii tourism in a sustainable manner. That was the intention. And what you're hearing now and what you're seeing with these scary headlines is that it's not being managed and it's not sustainable. So that's what we need to address. We also need, I think, uh, I have a friend that works for one of the big uh, agencies that do surveys and mm -hmm. what have you. So they, their people, their worker bees, went out to the international marketplace to do a survey of the tourists for a week. And what they came back with was the dissatisfaction mm -hmm. there of the Hawaii experience. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me, now that was just one survey, but I've heard that over the years, the tourists say, well, where are the Hawaiians? We mm -hmm. came for Hawaii, mm -hmm. where are the Hawaiians? There's nothing Waikiki looks like any other major tourist destination. What can we do so that when we do invite people to come, that they have an experience of, mm -hmm. that they can go back and say, well, my thousand dollars was worth it. You know, what can we do? How, how do we, if that's what's going on, and we have this organization whose mission was to make sure that we have a Hawaiian experience, what can we do? I'd like to say two things. One is to validate your, your finding uh, from your friends doing research. Uh, there's a wonderful book by Stanley Plogue called um, Leisure Travel, and in it there's a chapter called Why Destinations Decline and Fail and Nobody Does Anything About It. Uh, and it really goes back to the experience that the visitor has. As long as the visitor has a good experience, they're willing to spend the money. They're happy to spend the money because they're getting that experience. What happens over time is if you don't manage the experience uh, and it becomes too crowded and there, there's, a, uh, there's just a sense that I'm not getting my money's worth, that's when you see the decline start. So the response to that really is a part of marketing that the people don't talk about. People have a bad impression of marketers and marketing. And I, I've, I've been a marketer all my life, so I, I, I understand that, I get that. But marketers do a lot more than just push push for more people to come. Part of marketing is the product itself. And we need to talk about doing more with festivals, doing more with events, uh, managing the experience. And, you know, you have people going to Montevili Falls and there's no facilities there. There's no parking there. So the visitor goes there. They can't find a place to park. They go on this muddy trail because it's not maintained. They come back. They, they sort of borrow a residence hose to wash the mud off. The residents are unhappy, the visitors ne aren't necessarily happy, and that's a bad ex experience. We need to take a look at all those things and see how can we manage it. Do we need to somehow control the number of people that go on that trail? Nobody likes to be managed, but if you don't manage something, it's likely to become a problem, like Hanauma Bay was right. before, yes, so I remember before we that. put yes. some limits on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, when, in fact, I remember uh, I worked at the Satellite City Hall, the, in Hawaii Kai when it was early, early days. And nobody came to Hanama Bay. So we used to do storytelling mm. and what have you for local people to come to Hanama Bay. And then one day the tourist industry started advertising Hanama Bay and now you can't get there. Mm -hmm. Well, those, it's, not, it's not just the big things like Hanama Bay. I live in Kailua and the Japanese visitors <gasps> are going there. Oh, They're getting Lanakai. on bicycles. So, and that's okay, it just needs to be managed. Yes. M maybe we need to talk to the tour operators, and this, one of the roles for Hawaii Tourism Authority is to use their bully pulpit to, to talk to the wholesalers and say, you know, the beach is pretty empty on weekdays. Maybe, maybe you just do weekdays. I, I don't know what the answers are, but once you see a problem emerging, that's when somebody needs to step in and say, how do we, how do we respond to it before it becomes a crisis? I, I've seen the crowd in Lanakai, and it's mm -hmm. like, 
local people. If you live there, you can't park. Right. You know. Right. And the Lanikai Pillbox Trail is just a mess now yes. because of uh, overuse. Mm -hmm. And here again, there are. I don't know what the answers are, but there are a lot of opportunities. You know, everybody's got a smartphone now. Maybe we post messages about, you know, there's no more room on the, today. You can't go on the Lanikau Trail today because it's already booked. We do that with Diamond Head now. We, yeah. we try to control Diamond Head. So uh, we need a more comprehensive, a more expansive view of how to manage all these impacts. Well, what, what, where is that, quote, Hawaiian, Hawaii experience? The, That's the part Hawaiians. of the product experience. Where, where is... You know, if, if you look at why people go to a place, they go to sense the place itself right. and what it is. So um, part of this happens naturally. We have, we have a lot of, uh, the uh, I know this is going to air at different times, but this weekend is the Hawaii Book of Music Festival. Right. Great local great, event, great, great free, event. everybody yes. can go there. But um, there are a lot of those that, uh, that with technology people can find, but I think part of what the tourism authority and the state should be doing is to also create more opportunities for local residents to express the culture but then for visitors and residents alike to experience it. If you look at other successful destinations, um, New Orleans comes to mind. Of course there's Mardi Gras which is, a, a, yeah. I went once and I will it's, it's, it's a incredible. little much, it's yes. over the top. <laughs> but they've also got the jazz festival, they got a food festival, got like flower events. Um, Santa Fe, New Mexico has arts and uh, yes. other cultural experiences all year. So we need to look at, at not only nurturing those that already exist, but developing new ones. And they have to be on strategy. They have to have a purpose. The authority was looking at funding a mixed martial arts event. That is not, in my opinion, what we're about. So we need to, we to identify. The, the, the reason I think is because we have a champion that lives in Waianae. So all of a sudden, that mixed martial thing. I, I, I think that's how all of that came about, because he lives and he's from Waianae. And so they think, oh, well, people are interested. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Uh, however, and I think that should be done, but all the money that the promoters make they ought to be funding that and not the state. And if somebody wants to do something on their own, we can't control that. No, that's and, fine. and I think that's where that mm -hmm. belongs. But what the state should support is those things that are relevant to our our, our place, our strategy, right. our people, our culture. And um, I often say that a lot of strategy is saying no to things because everybody's got ideas. Yes. Let's let's do. I, if you remember the race car uh, yes. long ago, but. Um, uh, another saying that I use when I teach strategy is if you don't have a strategy, any road will get you there. So people come up with these <laughs> I love that. These any road ideas. will get you yeah. there. Yeah. So people come up with all these different ideas. Well, I had one lady, and I overheard the conversation, waiting on the bus, and she said, you know, in Jamaica, I heard Jamaican music everywhere. She said, I don't hear any Hawaiian music here. And I I just, well, you know, waiting on the bus and this is somebody else's conversation. But I thought about that. She's right. Mm -hmm. You don't hear it. Well, um, that's another opportunity. I th uh, when I was at, at Hawaii, and I used to work for Hawaii right. Tourism Authority, full disclosure. Yes. But um, I, I don't know what's going on with this now, but we had funded some uh, musicians to play at the, uh, at the airports, for example. Mm -hmm. They also fund things. The Book and Music Festival that I also mentioned is uh, partially funded by the, the book of, by the uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority. Now, with all the changes in the legislature, with budget cuts and everything, you know they've they've said, oh my God, too many tourists. We need to cut the budget. Well, some of what gets cut is some of these good things that are happening as well, and some of the ability to manage and control and shape the destiny of this place. Well, yeah, I I, I get that, but the hotels have a responsibility to advertise mm -hmm. and market. And there's, goodness knows there's plenty of them. Why, let's say Disney Hotel. Uh, I, I feel awful that the state is paying for what they're doing. You know, that, that kind of, and I'm sure that's where the legislature is coming from. Well, I can't blame. When, when because the budget is big mm -hmm. and it's all encompassing. 
And so these little things like that, they probably don't see or know about, you, I, I, I'm guessing. When I describe Hawaii tourism, I, I have described it as a mosaic. There are a lot of pieces to <laughs> it. And every, it, it's really great if, like a good mosaic, all those pieces come together. Mm -hmm. So uh, the hotels are going to try to fill their rooms, and that's that's it. Their, that's, that's their job. job. Yeah. So that's what they do. But what the Hawaii Tourism Authority should be doing is talking about the types of people that come here and the types of experience that they come here uh, for. And so if everybody works together, you've got this wonderful, homogenous, beautiful <laughs> mosaic. Well, now we have to take a break. But when we come back with. Frank Oz, let's talk about where you're going, mm -hmm. where you where you want to take this. Okay? Sure. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Aloha, I'm Marcia and we're back and we're spending the day with Frank Haas, as I told you, he's a dear friend, and he is with or reimagining, <laughs> rethinking, recreating Hawaii tourism. Mm -hmm. Now, for one of those things that you used to be a part of doing its growth, its growth uh, rather uh, is the Book and Music Festival, mm -hmm. which is wonderful. It's free, it's open to the public, and everybody needs to go. So what is the date on that? That's this uh, Saturday and Sunday, 10 to 5, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So that's May, May, May 6 and 7. You, uh, that's yes. right, yes. So um, if you go there, it's, it's an, uh, I think the tagline that we were using is uh, celebrating those things that make us Hawaii. So it's, it, it is the thinking, the, the books, the, the uh, culture, and the, um, the, the dance and the music. Mm -hmm. So it's all free. Uh, this year there's a, um, there's a free concert, uh, at, I think it's 4 o'clock on Sunday with Jake Shimabukuro. So uh, that will be terrific. Yes. Uh, you don't get to see great Hawaiian music like that for free very often. I'm, I'm always, well, yes. And the books, I saw just a story the other day where bookstores are in these days, yeah. real brick and mortar, and people are reading. Well, and more than that, at the Book and Music Festival, you can actually hear from the authors. They'll be there. So the author gets to read from their books? Read from the book and discuss the books. So it's, it's a very lively uh, event. People wander from uh, tent to tent to hear different authors, and uh, I've heard some really um, interesting discussions. I moderated a discussion once with uh, 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 about Hawaii tourism that was, uh, <laughs> there were a lot of divergent opinions and that's good, getting it all out there. So that's, uh, that's what the fest festival does. Well, okay, so if we're gonna reimagine, recreate this Hawaii Tourism Authority, what would you do? How do you take it from maybe it's a success today and maybe not tomorrow? What, what do we do to lift it out of the doldrums and into tomorrow, in, into a new way of tourism, of bringing tourists or not bringing tourists? How do we deal with what that should be? Um, that's a 16-week that's a college course right there. <laughs> okay, all right. But let me address uh, a lot so of those issues So you have to come back. <laughs> uh, for one thing, um, 
it's, it is about the experience. You mentioned experience yeah. in, the, uh, in the earlier part of the show. It's not just about the number of people. It's, it's the experience they have when they get here. And frankly, um, we can't control, we can't absolutely control the number of people that come here. There's this, this pesky constitution. There's a, there's right. a clause in there that's and about interstate commerce. And people stay for the trip of a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but what we can do is talk about the types of people who come here and the experience that they get when they, they get here. Now, the bigger part of your question is how do we do that? Uh, and I'm not sure it's anything necessarily new. It's just going back to the principles that were uh, discussed when HTA was created back in 1998 to strategically manage Hawaii tourism in a sustainable manner. Great words. Hasn't, apparently, if you read the headlines, it hasn't happened. So how do you do that? First of all, you have to realize that uh, tourism is this big, complicated Thing. It's not just one. It's not just marketing. It's not just the marketing thing. It's it's the the product. It's the workforce. It's the the, the workers that interact with the uh, visitors. It's the Hawaiian culture. It's the long range planning. It's uh, the environment. Uh, when we did the Hawaii strategic plan in 2005 to 15, there were nine strategic initiatives, and we said all of these nine things have to happen for us to be successful. And some of all those things that I just mentioned. And then there was a big discussion about, well, which is more important? Because some people said, oh, it's got to be marketing. And I'm the marketer. And I said, uh, all of these things have to happen. So we put them in the, in, the, in the plan in alphabetical order. The problem was the Hawaii Tourism Authority didn't have the authority to actually manage some of those things, like the environment, um, like uh, workforce development. So a lot of those things just didn't happen. There were some... Uh, structural things that were done to try to make that happen, like the uh, head of the Department of Transportation, the uh, head of the Department of Land were supposed to be on the HTA board. In fact, they never really got involved, so that changed. They're just not there anymore. So by the time the 2015 came around and a new strategic plan was needed, the HTA said, well, we can't manage some of that stuff, so we're just not going to deal with it. So the new strategic plan pretty much focused on a few things that the agency can control, but that's a myth. The, the, the reality is tourism require, a successful tourism requires right. you to deal with all those things. Um, now, my daughter, one of my many daughters-in-law is from Italy and speaks lots of language, as all Europeans do. And even though she and the, my grandchildren love coming to Disney, my grandchildren think that Mickey and Minnie Mouse vacation mm -hmm. in Hawaii, so they want to go vacation with them. But she says it is not European friendly. Mm -hmm. Not just Disney, but all the hotels. You know, the language. They see signs in Japanese, but even for Chinese, everything is in Japanese. And she says it's not European friendly. Well, uh, that's we, a big one to deal with. We live in a global right. village, and uh, I don't. There are, if we take that sixteen-week course on tourism, okay. there are a lot <laughs> okay. of problems, and that's one of them. You mm -hmm. know, it's not just language; it's it's also food. You know, if you have, uh, you need kosher food, halal food, right. vegetarian food, um, vegan food, because that's what visitors are that's looking what, for. Yeah. But but language. Uh, is especially a problem when visitors get in trouble and the, the police don't have multilingual skills. And I'm teaching a course in safety and security and a suggestion I had for the police department is, it, first of all, you should do language training, but if you can't do language training, at least have cards on you that say, do you need help in all kinds, kinds of, of languages. languages yes. right. So there are, you know, Marsha, we could talk about lots of deficiencies and that comes back to the fact that there the visitor industry is, is multifaceted and we need to look at a lot of these issues yes. and how to solve them. And we need an agency that has authority over those things and that can actually get them done. Things like homeless. You know, the homeless oh, is a problem everywhere, but it's also a problem in the resort areas. Who's, who wakes up in the morning and says, how, what are we doing about that? The That's airport experience, one. the airport yes. experience, landing uh, internationally after a red eye flight is, is terrible. They push you into this wiki wiki bus. You have to stand up because there's not enough seating. People yell at you, and then you know, and that's their first experience with Hawaii. I know. Uh, I hate to say how long ago it was, but when we first arrived on the airplane, the first time we came was on a ship, 
first time next on the airplane and you had to get off the plane and walk down and across the into this little it's still there and they greeted you with pineapple mm -hmm. juice and the aroma of the mm -hmm. lay it was like ah this is paradise mm -hmm. you know your first impression was absolutely wonderful and that's gone it, it is and it's harder to do with 10 million visitors than it, it was back with 2 million or 3 yes. million, but, but it can be done. And we need to recognize that there are standards out there that we're not meeting, uh, especially for our friends from Asia. If you come from Changi Airport in uh, Singapore or uh, the new Thai Airport, the new Bangkok Airport, that's their expectation. And they come here, which is supposed to be a wonderful resort where they're spending the rates in Waikiki average now are 230 some dollars a night. You know, there's an expectation that you're going to get that level of service. And, and unless we deliver that level of service, long term, that's where that decline and fail comes in. So we're, we're, tell me now your next step. We, we, we've talked about what has to happen. How do you go from here to your next step? What, what happens next? Well, I, I do not control things. So I'm just, I'm just a private citizen who has a lot of opinions and I'm not shy about sharing them. But a couple things need to change. Uh, marketing, I think, needs to change. We, uh, Senator Wakai says, well, when he cut, was talking about cutting the budget, he says we need to take the foot off the gas. Agreed. Uh, you know, we're, we, we need to distinguish between promotion and marketing. Promotion is getting more people here. But you can take all your foot off the gas, but you can't take your hands off the steering wheel. Right. And that's the other thing that marketing does. So we need to rethink marketing. We need to talk about really focusing on the type of visitor that comes here rather than the, 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 numbers. the numbers. And we know who the higher spending visitors are. The, the golf market, the wedding market, the, uh, the incentive market, the business market, the LGBTQ market, all those markets. And there are other markets that we could identify that are higher spending. So we really need to focus on that. There's a phrase that I use in my marketing class called uh, small is the new big. You have to stop thinking about mass marketing and think about these smaller markets. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing to do is to, to really um, focus on the product and the experience. And uh, that, that also requires investment. So cutting the budget is not necessarily a solution to the frustrations that people have about um, uh, tourism. In fact, spending more money may ease those frustrations. Well, I'm spending more money. One last thing. Several years ago, I was on the mainland in January, and there was this huge ice storm, gorgeous, beautiful ice storm. And before the end of the day, every warm weather destination had a commercial on the television except Hawaii. I'm okay with that because we're not selling sun sand surf. Yeah. I'd rather advertise to people who are looking for a cultural experience. No, I, but it was just amazing. My daughter and I said, where's Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Fiji, Dubai, mm -hmm. Jamaica, you know, all these warm weather because it was miserable. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, let's, let's get out of here. But that comes back to why are they doing that? Because they want more visitors to come because it's cold. I don't necessarily want more <laughs> visitors to come. I want, I want to advertise in a Smithsonian thing or in a travel show where we talk about hula or Hawaii cuisine or other things because that's the kind of visitor experience that we want to deliver. Well, so since this is a 16-week course, that means <laughs> you've got 15 more weeks to come back. Okay. <laughs> You will come back. I, 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 I'm not a shy person, Marcia. Thank you for <laughs> thank having me. Thank you. On. This has been a real pleasure. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Aloha. <laughs>